Hello, my name is Daniel. Welcome to my channel, Daniel's Bibliophagy. Today we're going to go over the books I read last week. Um, it is the third week of Garb August, which is an event on Booktube uh, created by Ollie at Criminali, uh, where we read trash for the month of August. Um, the prompts for week three was either novelizations or uh, books by famous people. And the first book I read is a book by a famous person. Uh, the book is called Shop Girl, and it's by Steve Martin of The Jerk fame. Um, this was a... I wanted to really like this book. Um, it is a book about Mirabelle, who is a uh, counter girl at Neiman Marcus. Uh, she works at the glove um, counter specifically, uh, which is sort of indicated that it's, it's a dying thing. No one really buys gloves at this point. Um, she's depressed. She has a little going on in her life. Uh, her friends are flakes. She has like two uh, living in LA. Her love life is not the most desirable thing. So uh, she's just sort of floating through life on her antidepressants. Um, when she meets a man who sort of switches that all around, he is a millionaire. Uh, about twice her age, who she has, uh, like, a... It's not really an affair, because they're both single at this point, but, like, a, a relationship with that's meant to be meaningless. Um, and then things happen from there. Uh, I wanted to enjoy this. Um, it's clear Steve Martin is, uh, not ignorant on human, <laughs> in human nature. However, his skill in writing is not quite... Uh, what we want to see. Um, he does like the, the mortal sin of writing, which is doing a lot of telling and not a lot of showing. Uh, this book is written in what I consider super duper third person omniscient, which is a technical term for the narrator knows everything. And in, in the case of this book, he shares everything. He tries to have a lot of like insights into human nature. Um, but the characters are so dead on the page. Like, things allegedly happen in this book, but there aren't scenes. Which is kind of weird this was written by an actor because there aren't scenes. Um, just set pieces where the narrator will just tell you things about, you know, what's going on in their heads and, like, their entire history. Things that probably don't matter. But, like, at no point do you get, like, the dialogue of, like, real human beings in this book. Um, it's just, like, him opining about, you know, human nature and what it's like to live in, in L.A. And it's just dead. Like, a, a metaphor for this would be, like, you, you want to, like, study the behaviors of, like, a bug. And so you... you ask your buddy Steve to sort of show you the bug, and instead you get like a dissected dead thing on, on the plate. You can see every like membrane, every spiracle of the bug, but you don't get to see like it alive and and doing things on its own. You, you learn really nothing about the characters themselves. You just sort of see the interior a crud of what's going on without seeing movement, without life. So, unfortunately, this one was a little bit dead as far as I was concerned. It, it was a, a bit of a disappointment. Um, the other book I read this week had nothing to do with Garbagas, and that is Gulliver's Travels. Um, it's just something I, I dove into randomly because I, I wanted something to, like, give me a boost from some of the disappointing garbage I've read this month. Um, and I, I remember really liking this way back in high school when I first read it, uh, so I decided to give it another go. It's really good. Um, one thing that stands out to me now that d didn't hit me the first time, um, is that this book is meant to be reread, so to speak. I'm just gonna hold up one. Uh, so, like, the, the entire introduction of the book makes no sense if you, if you haven't read, like, the, the book in its entirety at least once. Um, he's referring to people as yahoos and talking about winnums and, and things, and you're like, uh, okay. But I really enjoyed it, and the second go-around I've had reading this, um, the, it, it makes sense to me, so, like, I'm, I'm in on the joke, but it's nice to see an author who, like, will 
trust in the reader. Like, you'll get this eventually when you get this, and then it'll be funny then. Uh, so, this follows uh, Gulliver as he travels through a lot of, on four specific voyages. He goes to different locations, um, uh, like Lilliput, which is uh, filled with Lilliputians who are really tiny people. Uh, it's the first stop he makes. Um, and there, uh, I think uh, Swift um, lampoons a lot about royalty in the courts, how you can't put your, your, your faith in princes, because if, even if you, like, do, like, these great things, like, like Gulliver um, stopped a war by, like, just stealing an entire fleet, um, and, you know, he's, like, praised and, and, and worshipped by, by these, this small kingdom for, like, a day before they, he doesn't do something that they want him to do, and, and suddenly he's trash, and they, they are plotting to kill him behind the scenes, um, so, Something I did notice when I reread re this is that the, the vices of a nation um, really correspond directly uh, to their size. Um, so, like, the Lilliputians are, are tiny people, and you see all of the, the foibles of the court and the pettiness of mankind. And then when he goes to Brobdingnag, which is a, a, the complete opposite, the, the, uh, the island that's... Um, Red, the red, that's populated. Thank you, by uh, entirely giant people. Suddenly, like um, when Gulliver is is explaining how like Europeans do their governments, um, they're just compared to like vermin. Like, oh, what this infighting, this this senseless violence. Like that, these are, these are just vermin that need to be eradicated. Um, meanwhile, the Lilliputians are going to war over like the another nation who who doesn't um, open their egg from the right direction. So it, it's just something really interesting. Um, the quality, it, there's a, a few times in this book, especially like in Brobdingnag and when um, he goes to the island of the Winhams, which we'll get to, um, he makes a point like, well, this applies to all Europeans except England. You know, England, it's great. So, anyways, um, he goes on a few smaller ver uh, journeys after that. Uh, there's an island uh, called Laputa, I think, or it's populated by the Laputans, who are scholars who do everything the hard way because uh, it's more scientific and therefore it's better. Uh, and then he goes to an island where a sorcerer lives, um, where he raises the dead. He can raise the dead of anyone of any time. So Gulliver gets to meet a bunch of people from history, and they cannot lie because they're shades. Uh, and he just gets horribly disappointed by human nature, but like all these great men of history, like they were just scoundrels. They they backstabbed and nothing. Like he just got really super disillusioned with human nature, which is uh, something that happens as he goes on every adventure. Eventually, gets to the island of the the Winhams and the Yahoos. Uh, the Winhams are are horse like people. Um, who are basically just do not have the problems of, of human nature. So they, they see uh, human beings, or on the island, these bestial human beings called yahoos, as just complete and utter, like, disgusting creatures who, you know, when they're displeased with you, they'll climb up trees and then they'll throw their scat at you. There's a lot of, like, pu uh, scatological and, and poop humor in this, which is really funny. But uh, the hero Gulliver eventually gets so disillusioned, like we're all yahoos and we're we're crap and we're nowhere near as as noble as these Winhams. And unfortunately, he's forced to go. Um, but he starts seeing humanity as just as vermin, kind of like the Brobdingnag saw them, um, to the point where like. He's like wearing clothes and, and making boats made with uh, Yahoo hides, which is really funny because when you think about it, that's just, you know, human skin. Um, but he doesn't care. He just wants to go and, and live with his horses. When he gets back to England, he just can't stand his family because they're just Yahoos and they're, they're vile, disgusting creatures. So he goes to the stables and just consults with his horses. Um, this is a really funny book. Uh, I haven't gotten through all of the... Um, the other uh, essays and stuff in, in both 
in both of these volumes, which I want to get to, but um, I was able to get through Gulliver's Travels, and I really love it. I highly recommend it. It was the highlight of the week. So, things I'm currently reading still. I'm still reading the novelization of the movie version of The Island of Dr. Moreau. I didn't get through it uh, yet due to like the schedule and stuff, but um, uh, I, I just, I'm really curious of why this exists at all. Uh, like, we have, a, we have a great book. Why do we need a novelization of it? And, and when I started reading it, like, I can tell which one's going to be the superior book. Uh, this uh, screenplay adaptation kind of falls into the trap of really bad old movies where the there's a solitary character and he'll start, start talking to himself as if there were an audience, like... In a, in a way where, where no one would talk to themselves, like, well, if my name ain't so-and-so, like, I, would, I wouldn't do this. Uh, like, it's just, um, let's see if I can find an example. It's just things that wouldn't happen, and you see it in bad film. But this is like a novelization of uh, quite possibly a bad film. So you could just remove that, and but and just like have it be like internal text like it is in the original but I, I i don't know what constrictions um or restrictions that the the author had when doing this but if he had to be faithful to the movie which i haven't seen so i don't know um or what so let's see an example would be Braddock sat up straighter, a touch of what he had been before returned to his face. Good lord, I shoved him over the side myself, he said, remembering it clearly. And I've been giving in. No, my lad, that's not for Andrew Braddock. Die I may, but I won't help with it. It's like, you don't declare your own name to yourself in a boat. I mean, I guess he is like, you know, dying of thirst and whatnot, but it's just bad writing and as far as I'm concerned, so... Maybe it gets better, but I don't have high hopes for it. And then, because I feel like I've been failing Garbagus, I haven't gotten through as much as I, nearly as much as I wanted to. I have a, a small pile here of things I want to get through. So the first thing, because um, the last week is anything goes, so that's going to be my catch up of things I could have read during previous weeks. So we got VC Andrews' Flower in the Attic, uh, William Shatner's Tech War. Jaws 2, Flash Gordon, and The Night Church. Since I didn't get a paper, uh, a real paperback from hell, uh, this will be what I'm going to read, hopefully to fill in that gap from week one. So that's it. Um, it's been a busy week. I don't really have a lot of more insight than that. So anyways, I hope you're doing well. I'll see you later. I did get a rather sizable book haul because, again, I can't be trusted. Um, but I got some really interesting things that I want to share with you later in the week. So I will talk to you later. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.